Okay, so it started already? Yes, please. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, inshallah, now we are going to give tafsir, provide the tafsir of Surah Al Fatiha. And first of all, we, before going and indulging into Surah Al Fatiha, there are some kind of guidelines that we should know before indulging into the tafsir itself and we should understand that it is one of the greatest surahs of the Quran. First of all, most of these scholars, they mention that because even that this surah is only seven, I add seven verses, but it is considered to be the greatest surah in the Quran, the greatest chapter in the Quran. And this is what Rasulullah mentioned in many, many a hadith that these verses are considered to be like a treasure and they are considered to be uh, giving in very concise speech all the pillars of our deen. So first of all, <clears throat> the first point is regarding when it has been, it has been revealed to Rasulullah there is some uh, kind of uh, different opinions regarding this issue and the most, or the highly authenticated one, is that it has been revealed very early on, in the beginning of the prophethood, during the Meccan period. Okay? So this is the most authenticated, or at least the most right one, al-Rajat min aqwal al-Ulama, that it, is, it has been revealed early, not in Medani period at all. Okay? And after that, the number of the verses, as we can see here, it is seven verses. This is also among the ulama, they are saying that it is seven. Other ulama, they are counting it as eight, but it's the less correct opinion. The most correct one is seven ayat, as we can see here. And the third point is regarding al asma, the names of Surah Al-Fatiha. It has many names. So some ulama, they count 12 names. Suyuti and Ithqan, he counted 25 names. Can you imagine? For Surah Al-Fatiha. There are some famous names for it. So the first, for example, name is Al-Fatiha or Fatiha Al-Kitab. Okay? And the second one is Umm Al-Kitab. Umm means that the mother of the book. Okay? And Al-Fatiha is like something that the opening of something. So this is the meaning of Al-Fatiha and Umm Al-Kitab means the mother of the book because it is, it includes all the main things in the book. Umm Al-Kitab and then Sab'a Al-Mathani which is, which are, Sab'a Al-Mathani means that the verses, Sab'a means that seven verses. Mathani in Arabic means that repeated. So because we are repeating this verses, these verses during every Salah, actually during every Raka'ah, then they are, we call it Sab'a Al-Mathani. We have other names, these are the, the most famous uh, names. Another names also, it is Al-Kanz, Wal-Waqiyah, Wal-Hamd. Al-Kanz means the treasure, Al-Waqiyah means the protector, Al-Hamd means that the praise, and Al-Shifa, the cure, and Al-Kafiyah, which is the sufficient one, Wal-Asas, Wal-Ruqiyah. Al-Asas means that the pillar or the foundation. Wal-Ruqiyah means that also something related to the protection. Okay, so these are like 10 names and we just, we can remember like three main names. What is the first one? Al-Fatiha. Al what, what is the second one? Al-Mulkitab. 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 Al-Mulkitab.
ألم يقل الله استجيبوا لله والرسول إذا دعاكم ثم قال لا وعلمنك سورة هي أعظم سورة سورة في القرآن I'm going to teach you رسول الله is giving telling this to the companion that I'm going to teach you the سورة which is the greatest سورة in the Quran okay قبل أن تخرج من المسجد and then رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said الحمد لله رب العالمين that all praise due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى which is the start of سورة الفتح this is as we said it's an authenticated hadith and Bukhari gives to you the meaning أعظم سورة في القرآن okay so if I ask you what is the evidence of this surah to be the greatest surah in the Quran you will answer me and say what what is the evidence seeing of holy prophet yes this is a hadith that is narrated by al-bukhari okay 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 another thing <coughs> let's go now to the starting of this surah which is whenever we start the quran in general we say a'udhu billahi min ash shaitan ar rajeem anyone knows what is the meaning of a'udhu billahi i seek refuge yes in that's billahi. right i seek refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from ash shaitan the satan ar rajeem ar rajeem in arabic means that al matrud min ar rahma matrud min rahmatillah he is expelled or driven out from the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay and we said, as we said many times, it is recommended uh, that we should always give this istaada in the beginning of the surah. Okay? Okay. And... Let's go to Bismillah. The meaning of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah. الاسم as they say here اللفظ الذي يدل على ذات أو معنى وقد اختلف أن نحن في اشتفاق على وجه بسم الله means that in the name of Allah in the name of God because usually the people of the Quraysh and non-believers they started always with other yes associates of Allah سبحانه وتعالى they say بسم الله بسم العزة okay which is or which are the idols so here Allah here Allah سبحانه وتعالى started with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. We are always recite Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. The question is, what is the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim? Ar-Rahman or Ar-Rahim. Maybe Ar-Rahman or Ar-Rahim, one of those names, has mercy for both this world and for the Akhira. Mm -hmm. including the non-believers okay but uh, another one is only for this world okay any other opinion Ar like non-believers most no beneficent Ar rahim in most merciful so what is the difference i mean that the the significance not only the interpretation in english yes i this is good but we want to know the significant whenever whenever you say in every raka Ar rahman Ar rahim does it make sense for you there is some difference or no or they are synonyms for example they are interchangeable I think Rama of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this earth, earth mm -hmm. in this world is also for the both believers and non-believers. Mm -hmm. But for, on the Day of Judgment, only Rama is reserved for Muslims, only the believers. You, you are close to it. But again, okay, this is, this is nice to know about this because one thing that is very important for us, okay, for a Muslim, is to understand. Okay? So most of our uh, environments, they force us to to be uh, quantity people, not quality people. So always we recite this Fatiha maybe from, from day one, from, okay, maybe for 20, 30 years. But maybe this is maybe the first time for you to know what is the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. This gives you that the way that we are following always in our uh, home countries, our environments and societies, actually it need to be rectified as well. Okay, you should always combine with the Hivs, memorization and understanding. We are concentrating on Hivs only. But we neglect the part of understanding. And understanding should always be based on Al-Ilm. Okay? Ilm, knowledge. So do not invent things. Do not come out of nowhere and say, this is, I guess, this is like this. This is not right. This is not an Islam at all. Islam, Ilm, means Qala Allah, Qala Rasul. And the consensus among the ulama, they are saying this and that. But do not invent anything out of nowhere. Okay? And another thing, 
that is some people they are let's go to this which is a Rahman al-Rahim the ulama they mentioned that we have like three different levels of understanding or three different understanding based on the scholars or the scholars understanding the first one is the famous one which is brother Hasnain mentioned that Ar-Rahman in general means that the merciful with all creation whether they are good or bad whether they are believers or non-believers so we'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala merciful, for example, with the non-believers. Okay? Even that, they are not uh, worshipping Him. Even though they are associating others with Him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful with them. So this is the first meaning. Merciful means with the all creation. But Ar-Rahim means that with the believers only. Okay? With the believers. وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا that he is with special mercy with the believers. So this is the first meaning, or this is one of the opinions of the, of the ulama. Another meaning based on the ulama that Ar-Rahman means that his mercy is so vast and at the biggest level. But Ar-Rahim means that at the detailed level. Okay? So you will find that, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahman with the, as we said, with the whole creation, okay? But again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahim with the whole creation also in very specific and detailed issues, okay? Even that the animals, for example, the horse, the female horse, that she is protecting her son or the small horse or something, that is by even raising its leg, but it cannot drop it heavily on the uh, on its head right this means that it takes care of her child right this is mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very detailed uh, level so this is another level of understanding of Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim another point which is they said that Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim they said that whenever we are talking about Ar-Rahman means that comes from the word like for example in Arabic we say that Ghadban Ghadban means that he is angry means that the angry is is full or he is filled with angry to the point that he the angry is controlling him for example and the same also whenever we say Sakran Sakran Arabic means that he is drunk drunk means that he is drinking so much that he cannot even be conscious of what he is saying or doing. Okay? So the word, this sigha or this form, which is Ar-Rahman, means that he is so merciful, that he is controlling it as if it is the something that is like naturally, for example, something that is outwardly comes and it is controlling. Okay, controlling the person. But now we're talking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to him is the exalted example. This means that Sirat Mubalagha. Very you can consider it as an exaggeration for the way of merciful. So this is the meaning of merciful, Ar Rahman. Ar Rahim means that consistent, dead. So we are ascribing or we are giving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala two different attributes. Ar Rahman means that with the best kind of mercifulness and Ar-Rahim means that with consistent mercifulness okay it is consistent one in the kind of the uh, big or the we can say the amount of Rahma the other one with the time which is consistency so maybe you will find someone who is very merciful with you at one hour at one day one one year but actually after that no he is not doing something good for you but actually for Allah, no, it's totally different. He is merciful with the greatest kind of understanding and conception of mercifulness, but in the same time, it is consistent. So this is the third level of understanding, and this is actually what the ulama and muhafikun, they are talking about it, as it has been mentioned uh, here. So actually this, this understanding, as we said, this is not coming from different places. This is tafsir from Al-Qurtubi, Al-Tabari, Ibn Kathir, and Tahir Ibn Ashur, Tafsir Al-Wasid, Tuntawi, Tafsir Al-Wasid, Al-Azhar, they are highly authenticated and calibered ulama, giving the tafsir based on narrations of the ulama. 
Okay, we're not bringing it out of nowhere. Okay, so this is the meaning of Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So the first meaning is what? What is the first meaning? So you have to be, you have to be paying attention with me. Okay. Yes, the first one is what? Ar-Rahman, merciful for all words. Okay, and the Rahim means. Only merciful, merciful, more merciful for the believers. For so, okay, period. this is the, the first one. Okay, the second meaning? Uh, he is merciful for all the time, not at some extent. Like but this is for Rahim. No, I, I mean the, the understanding itself. Ar Rahman no. is uh, Rahmat, which is at highest level. Uh -huh. The higher level. And Ar Rahim is specific. Yes, for this specific. is right. That's the second. And the third one? The third okay. understanding, according to Ulama. According to Ulema, Rahim is consistent. Yes, and too much. Yes, and the Rahman is something like, as we say, the Sirat Mubalagha, exaggeration. That he is very, very merciful. This is a Rahman, and a Rahim means that very consistent. Because we, if somebody come to me or ask, please give me some money, uh, yes. have mercy on me. I will give one time, two time, third time. Yeah, Maybe I will say, please start <laughs> yes, something. Like yes, that. you can make it closer by this. Giving an example, this is very powerful way. And this is actually the, the way of Rasulullah so that it get the meaning closer to your mind. So keep uh, I have one question about this. Yes. Ar-Rahman, it will be the characteristic of Allah SWT if we repent, if we do some sin mm -hmm. and ask for repentance. Yes. Now, is it Rahim, like special attention from Allah SWT? For this, for Ar-Rahman, yes. Based on which meaning? Because based on... The second meaning, for example, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the non-believer who is committing all the sins all of his lifespan. And before just the end of his lifespan, he says, Shara la ilaha illallah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah accepted him. Allah accepted this. Even that he have committed a lot of evil work and actions. This is rahmah. This, this is rahmah. So this is something that we, we should understand. So. Yes, on both levels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be Rahman with the Umm, with the nations. And can be also Rahim or with the third understanding that we said. Uh, or no, no, the first understanding that with the specific, specific things, okay? That, that you will find even the ants and the insects and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rahim with them, merciful with them, okay? So this is something that is, uh, should be considered, okay? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. This is we said Bismillah. Yes, and illa, we, we didn't say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we say this means in the name of. Allah means Allah. Allah ismun alam ala rabb. Means that he is, it is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said that the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. After that, Alhamdulillah. And we said that Al Qurtubi, okay, Al Qurtubi says, Hada is Al Ism Akbar wa Asma'i subhana wa ajma'uha hatta qala ba'd al ulama and now Ism Allah al A'ram. They said that Allah is the greatest name of our God. Okay, Allah. Ism Allah al A'ram. Walam yet a samma bihi ghayr. Okay, well, there it lam. Lam yuthan or lam yuthan. You will not find in Allah that plural. And you will not find, we call it muthanna, muthanna two, two of it. For example, whenever we say Ar-Rahman, so we can say Ar-Rahmanan, for example, or too merciful, but Allah, no, there is no two, there is no three, it is only one Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we said, it is the ismullah al-a'zam, and there is no plural or no two of it. Allah ismul al-mawjood. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Let's go now to the other, which is... Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Okay. Alhamdu means that praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamd means that to praise someone. Okay. So if I did a favor for you, what you are going to do, if I did this favor to you, what you are going to, to do toward me? Thank you. Mm -hmm. praising you. Thanks. Uh, okay. I appreciate you. Praising you. Thanking or appreciating, which one is the the one that you are doing, or all of them they are going to do 